57 then looking at bearings as we close in on the 100th video what is a bearing well it's basically an angle and it allows us to describe how one point relates to another the direction so for instance if i've got a bearing from one ship to the second ship i could then turn my ship in that bearing and i would be heading towards the second ship for instance by here we've got point a and point b and we could have the bearing from a to b in which case we'd have the angle at which we'd need to turn a in order to move towards b or we could have the bearing from b to a similarly that's the angle we'd need to turn from the ship b to go towards a so with bearings we have two lines firstly the there's uh, a line directly north from the object that we're going from the bearing is from um, it's a good point to note that the direction north of those two points will be dead parallel to each other because parallel lines have certain properties that we'll look at later on in this uh, set of videos but for now we're going this first line is directly north straight upwards a vertical line from point b from the point that we're going from we're also then going to create a line from the between the two points so now we've got two lines and remember in the exam these wouldn't be big huge spots these would be little dots or little crosses we've got two lines that we can find an angle between now in bearings we always take the clockwise angles which makes sense because if you took the clockwise angle from one point and the, an the anti-clockwise angle from another then we'd be getting a bit confused so we're going to take the clockwise angle from point b or from north sorry of point b to the line that heads towards point a and when i give that angle i can tell anybody turn the ship in that direction from north around to that bearing and then we're heading towards ship a so how do i work out b well we can simply say that for starters this part by here on the right of this line i've just put in is half of a semicircle it's a semicircle shape albeit wonky because of the free drawn line a circle itself is 360 degrees so half a circle would be 180 degrees so i know this point from here um, there's also a rule called angles on a straight line add up to 180 so this angle has to be 180 degrees so in an exam if i had to work out the bearing i wouldn't have to calculate this angle by here i'd only have to measure this angle by here and to do that i would use a protractor if you haven't got one you'll need to get one for the exam try getting one to practice with so we've got 180 by here and we might have 50 at the angle by here we've measured it with a protractor i'm only approximating here so that the full angle adds up to 230 the bearing from b to a is 230 let's have a look in the other direction then so the bearing from angle a to b we need the line directly north of a and then the angle by here would be the um, bearing from A to B. However, what if in the exam they don't give you a protractor? It can happen that you're not allowed to use one in a bearings question, in which case you're going to have to use a couple of tricks to work out the angle. In this case, they would have to give you the angle by here somehow. And in our example, we know it's 230 that tells us because this full circle all the way around has to add up to 360 there are 360 degrees in a circle this angle has to be 360 take away 230 i.e it's 130 degrees so this angle this anti-clockwise angle from b is 130 degrees now from here we can use another little rule which we'll again uh, recap on later on but when we've got two parallel lines like this and they're joined up with another the two angles inside always add up to 180 
Again, we'll go through that at a later date, but this is one that tends to pop up in bearings, so I'm putting it in by here as well. So I can say that the anti-clockwise angle from B and the actual bearing from A to B is going to add up to 180. And I know this angle here is 130, so 180 take away 130 means this bearing by here is 50, 5, 0. However, in bearings, we've always got to have three numbers. So if you've got a number that is below 100, you have to put a 0 before it. In this case, the bearing is 0, 5, 0. And that is bearings probably the two different ways that they can put the questions towards you. But remember, a bearing is from <coughs> the line directly north of the object we're going from, clockwise around to the line that runs to the uh, place that we're going to, and it's always a three-digit number.